Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. This is your host Majestic speaking and today we're going to be mixing up the format a little bit of our video on the Supernova. In particular, the Boiler Hero. Now, what I usually do is go through the intro and explain the mech a little bit and then go through the gameplay and close with some final thoughts. But we're going to start off with some gameplay, a little bit of a warm-up round. So I already did record the intro. So I will have the same intro for you guys in case you just want to skip to, you know, the mech lab in which we're already, you know, talking about the mech and in particular what the video is about. I already recorded that before putting this round of gameplay in, so you will hear that intro once you get to the mech lab. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to throw in an extra round here. And obviously, as you guys can see, we are starting off on Frozen City, very uh, conducive to our strategy for heat management. And we have a Viper there very early on making his way behind enemy lines, and a Locust joins him. So we're going to put a very big Alpha into this Locust very early on, and that Shadow Cat is able to clean him up. So it's one zip at the 13 minute mark already. And we already, and we are going to zone in on this Viper as well. Honestly, seeing how many uh, members of my team are conforming on this Viper, I would just be happy if I got a couple shots in on him and got the assist, uh, you know, prompt to come up. Now, the Viper is very shifty as a mech in general, so there we go. We got a little bit of a tap on him. He is legged and his arm was taken off. We did take his arm off and then my team was able to clean him up. So now it's 2-zip and we're at the 12-30 mark. So very, very... 12-1 uh, now. I guess we lost one, but... Very, very good sign this early on in the match. And, uh, you know, we are going to make our way, hopefully, across to the other side. As you can see, I have a very brawly build on this particular mech. On this particular variant of the Nova, the only one that does have all of the weapon types. So, we're going to go try and get our way across to the other side of the battlefield so that we can actually put these... All of these weapons to use. We can use our UAC 10s as suppressive fire right now, but what we're going to be doing is just making sure that obviously, if we do put down some suppressive fire, that we're also continuously advancing uh, our way across the battlefield. So, not yeah, too much exposure um, right now. We don't want to expose the mech too much and take any unnecessary damage. But we do want to. Oh, now it's two two. So already it's uh, you know it's trying to balance itself out, and our team is a little bit scattered. I see a couple of our assault mechs making their way across, and you know what? I'm gonna join them. So if I can get some shots down on these guys, even as we're making our way, now we're gonna go right across the middle. I'm very curious to see how this turns out, and it, although it might seem like a risky move. We cannot play the suppression long range game with this particular build, especially on this map, because they will just pick us apart. Um, especially by the time our UAC 10 slugs make it our way, their way all the way across to the other side. So, our we have a supernova friend up in front of us here, and we also have a centurion up on the hill, and it looks like they do have some UAVs here. We have a UAV of our own, and yeah, that's ours. So I'm not, I can't shoot that one, or I'm not going to shoot that one. But we are going to make our way around to the other side near the dropship and help out a couple of our friends. They have an Ebon Jag over here and Juliet looks like, yes, it's a Nova Breaker Hero. So we have a light mech that's over in that direction. There's a Centurion right in front of us and it looks like he's trying to make his way back to, I guess, where the rest of his team is. We don't have a lot of spotting or a scout information on them, but... I can only imagine if he's running back that way that a majority of their team is over there. But a lot of my team is now conforming onto where this Breaker Hero is. And that would be clutch to get this guy out of the way because that might actually not only get a kill for our team, but also start our maneuver as a flank on, onto, their, onto the right side of their formation. So if we can get this guy down, yeah, he's going to come right in front of us and we're going to be able to get a huge shot into him. So there he goes. And he's trying to do circles. I don't think he realized that a couple of us were coming up the ramp. Yeah, he had no idea. He's just trying to get down as much damage as he possibly can. Couple big shots into him, and my team is able to clean him up. So now it is five to two at this point. Big shots taken. We are supported by a Hellbringer. It looked like, was that a Locust I think was with us? Yeah, I think a Locust was there. But it doesn't look like the rest of their team has a very the, big presence the. over here. And my over the comms, everyone's saying, come on, push in, push in. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're going to take a position where we are protected on our left. We do get some exposure on our right, but we're going to tunnel ourselves and see if we can pick off a target. And Lima is right in front of us. 
this Timberwolf has no idea that we're here until right now. He did get some, some, some huge fire from me, and now we're going to pop the cool shot to constantly lay in some damage into him. He is a Goss PPC build. That is clearly a meta build that he's going for, and he's just trying to put down some damage, get to the rest of his team, and hopefully get some support. But it doesn't look like much help. He's, yeah, he, did, he turned his back on us. So he's just constantly doing circles. And his team has no idea that this encounter is going on. And we do finally get that kill. We did hit our heat threshold. So we do have to be careful there. But now I have two options. I can either retreat back into cover and hopefully just get some shots in here and there or tank some damage and serve as a distraction for the team and I want to do the latter it is eight to nine at this point and I want to help my team get into a better position to help clean up these Kodiaks so this Kodiak is coming for me yeah he just turned and started firing took off my right torso gonna fire into that center torso one more time and he goes down 12 ounce Jesus you are mine and now we're gonna turn on to our next target core him up as much as we possibly can so that our team has a very very easy time hopefully taking him out and in the meantime we got taken out so I go down two kills three assists and 816 damage we will go through the rest of the stats at the end of the round but right now we do have to focus on our team and hopefully they are able to clean it up we're we are right now specking mech warrior in that pirate's bane that helped us out on the right flank earlier or the left side of the map but the right flank on our enemies and right now over comms, they're just saying take out the mislinks because all that's left after him are those two Kodiaks. So if we have a Shadow Cat and this Pirate's Bane left, it should be easy pickings for these guys. So there he goes. The mislinks is taken out. Now it is 10 to 10, two on two. Locust and a Shadow Cat versus two Kodiaks. Now, I definitely would rather be on this side right now just because as an assault mech, you can get some huge damage down but the Locust and the Shadow Cat are both very shifty mechs. Now, one is a medium and one is a light, hey there, and the range. Pirate's Bane is definitely one of the hardest mechs in the entire game to hit and has a very, very small profile. And we're going to spec Mech Warrior. Yes, that is his actual in-game name. He got the name Mech Warrior. And as you can see, he's just popping up. This Kodiak has no idea where the damage is coming from. He just keeps turning around, looking all around, trying to see where that damage comes from. And he gets the kill. He popped that torso, and he goes down. So now it's the Pirate's Bane and the Shadow Cat versus this last Kodiak here, Delta. And the co this guy has no idea where it's coming from either. He's not even, I don't know if he's confused by the indicators or something, but he looks like he's just trying to figure out where anything is coming from. He did try and return some fire, and he did not get any damage down on this Pirate's Bane. So the Pirate's Bane definitely has the advantage, definitely has the speed advantage, and obviously... This other Kodiak, both these Kodiaks were cored out, and that's part of what our job was before we died, is to get these guys cored up as much as we possibly could so that it would be easier for the rest of our team to clean it up. It's all about teamwork in this game, and hopefully we set up our team to do so. This Kodiak and the Pirate's Bane, it looks like they're going to go head-to-head -head right now. Torso-mounted weapons, so those... Lasers go into the snow. He's turning around. This Kodiak can get him if he be's careful, but he overheated. So that gives our, our pilot in the Pirate's Bane Mech Warrior a huge opportunity to get the kill. He takes full advantage of it, and there he goes. That is going to wrap it up for this round. Let's see how we did in our first round with the Boiler Hero. Two kills, four assists, 816 damage with eight components destroyed. Very, very well played match, but let's hop back into the mech lab and go through a discussion about the build. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is your host Majestic speaking with another episode of Mech Warrior Online here. And today we're going to be doing our review on the Supernova. And as I like to do on all of my first day review releases of any brand new mech that's entered into the game, I like to take out the hero variant. So in particular, I have the hero variant in front of you guys, Boiler. Now we're going to be doing a full review on the Boiler and the Supernova chassis in general so as we're going to go through each of the steps of this uh you know full review here we're going to go through the loadout we're going to go through you know exactly what i placed on this mech and then we're going to dive into the gameplay and close with some final thoughts now before we actually dive into the gameplay or anything i want to let you know that this is a completely mastered mech as of the first day when i actually streamed this mech coming out um 
you know, we came up with this particular loadout that day, and I really, really enjoyed it, especially after, uh, you know, this entire week, everyone talking about the Supernova not being able to brawl. So we came up with this loadout on the first day, and over the course of the week, I heard more and more people saying, you know, the Supernova really isn't intended to be a brawler. It's kind of like a surprise brawler, like an Atlas sitting in the, uh, you know, the, the Crimson Strait tunnel waiting for some traffic to run by. And then, you know, bang, surprise, here it is, just unloading a tremendous amount of, uh, of damage all in one swoop without having that sustainable kind of DPS that you might expect from, say, a Dire Wolf. So here we're going to prove the haters wrong. We're going to show that the Supernova is just as capable, if not more capable in some aspects of being a brawler, especially when it comes to short and mid-range kind of uh, support. So, you know, the no the Supernova, um, you know, it's kind of like a mix between the Marauder 2C and the Dire Wolf, except it's on a majority of the variants, the focus is on energy boating. Now, the boiler is the pretty much the most unique out of them all and it's unfortunate that you do have to pay you know for the hero add-on in order to have access to this particular mech and you know everything that it has to offer because it's not an omni mech so with some of the other clan uh, mechs where you're able to switch out the components and mix and match your loadouts to your liking the supernova is limited in that aspect and a majority of the other variants are focused very heavily on those energy hardpoints but the boiler does add a little bit of an extra variable here because we have access to every type of weapon at our disposal so let's hop into the garage here and go through exactly what this guy has to offer and what i actually placed on it so as for the hard points we have two ballistic three energy three missile one ams and zero ecm no quirks or anything like that. This is a completely mastered mech as of the first day when it released. And I streamed. I showed you guys that day that I completely filled out the tree for you guys to show you how it actually performs from an optimal perspective. Now, again, no quirks or anything. It is a, uh, you know, it is a clan assault mech. 90 tons to work with. But one of the problems that a lot of people were finding, especially in the early goings with this mech, is there's just so much extra or free tonnage to work with. So you really have to mix and match with not only what style you want to play, but the weapons to support that style and obviously fill it out to make it optimal out there on the battlefield. So let's hop into exactly what we placed on this thing as of the first day and what I kept. I told you guys that day I was going to keep this loadout and do a review with it because I felt like if there was going to be a claim that the that the Supernova can in fact brawl just like any other you know clan or inner sphere assault mech we're going to make a case with it and we're going to make a case with this particular loadout. So what we have on it Two UAC 10s, three small pulse lasers, and three SRM 6s with Artemis. So we have every single weapon hardpoint filled out, and this is pretty dynamic. Um, this is a very dynamic approach to filling this mech out entirely. Now, you could place uh, UAC 20s and mix around, mess around with it. You could put LB 10s on there. I know a lot of people like the shotgun splat approach, especially when you have the uh, SRMs in there. But I decided to go with the UX, and the reason why I wanted to go with the UX 10s is because I really like constantly working on improving my aim. And with uh, the the Clan UX 10s, you know, placing that kind of more pinpoint damage as opposed to spread fire shotgun approach, where you can get partial damage for every shot, I want to make sure that my shots count and, and constantly keep striving to become a better pilot. And Part of using ballistics is being able to lead your targets and time it pro properly and understand, like, you know, trajectory and distance and everything like that. Whereas the LB-10s and L any LB weapon for that matter is a little bit more forgiving in which you have a, a, obviously a radius in which you can obviously tag your opponents with even partial damage. So I wanted to make sure my shots count. I wanted to stick with the UAC-10s and just make it work. Somehow, some way, go out there on the battlefield and just prove the haters wrong and make this thing, uh, you know, live. Make it possible. So, again, the UAC-10s, one in each arm. That is where the ballistic card points are, one in each arm. I placed four tons of ammo. So, one in the head, two in the center torso, and then one in the right torso. Now, the three energy hard points are all located in that right torso. Now, um, 
if you look at where they stack up, it's kind of interesting how they do stack up. They're like right next to each other, all on, all right next to the cockpit. So they're pretty much one of the highest mounted weapons on this chassis, on this variant in particular, because they're pretty much in line, if not higher than you know two of the three missile hard points. But the pro but the point is is that they're right next to each other. They're right next to the cockpit, so you know if you can see it, you can shoot it. You're at very short distance with them, so you have to understand. You know you're going to be getting some face time in that in, from that perspective. But having the three small pulse lasers right next to each other, coupling that as a follow-up in close range with the UAC-10s, and then following up with our missile hardpoints, three SRM-6s with Artemis. Now we have four tons of UAC-10 ammo, and we have four tons of SRM ammo. So this thing is completely loaded up to the T. Um, has a very decent heat management ratio. We've crammed it with heat sinks. It has an XL-320 in there. Now, with speed tweak, it goes 62 kph, which is pretty good. I mean, it's not great if you compare to, you know, like, a, a, you know, say the Spirit Bear with mask or something on there. But for what it is, you know, 90 tons to work with, you know, it has its place. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, I'm still going to mess with it, but it does have its place for right now from what I can see. So, again, two UAC-10s, three SRM-6s, three small pulse, four tons of ammo for the UAC-10s and the SRMs, and then we placed, uh, you know, in total, 17 double heat sinks on there, including 10 in the engine, seven that we placed on there, so two on top of the engine, and then, as you can see, two in the right torso, one in the left torso, and then one in each arm, pretty much just for crit padding. Um, you know, it has all 90 tons filled out. That's just a, a glitch right there for saying 89.9 out of 90 tons. 77 out of 78 slots filled. All the armor is filled out on this thing. So we are at max durability for what this mech has to offer. 1.27 is the heat management ratio. It does beat my minimum threshold of 1.2. And as I mentioned, 17 double heat sinks, a 74 point alpha. So very, very, uh, you know, intense alpha when you get everything firing off. And as you guys know, sometimes I do get a little trigger happy. So we know that we will be placing 74 points of damage every time I do decide to get a little trigger happy. And as I mentioned, 62 kph with speed tweak. That is mastered. So, you know, it's slow, but, you know, hopefully we can still make it work. 12.7 is the jump distance. I, you know, I was able to place two jump jets on here with four extra tons without going over our allotted slots and, uh, you know, tonnage and everything like that. Um, I placed them in each torso, so they, uh, you know, help with our jump distance. Pretty much just getting over, you know, smaller obstacles. Um, you know, if you're doing a little bit of hill climb, it can assist in getting you closer to, you know, your, your, your ultimate destination. Um, but, you know, they're not something that you're going to be relying on heavily, um, you know, with this particular build. Some people did do the dual Gauss PPC build on it, um, you know, and they do make those jump jets work to their advantage. But I'm kind of going against the meta. You know, I, I don't want to stick to the meta just to, to prove that this mech is viable. I want to show that there are other options out there for you guys to explore in order to make this thing just as good, if not better, than, uh, you know, your your expectations and with, you know, a customized personal loadout that I specifically wanted to take. So let's hop into the modules and then we'll jump into the gameplay. Advanced Seismic Sensor and Radar Depth are the two mod mech modules that I decided to go with. Again, especially with playing a short to mid-range mech, I cannot express to you how important it is to have Advanced Seismic Sensor just to know exactly where your opponents are, especially with a a 90 ton assault mech that does take a little bit more time to maneuver and turn and and get set up to place that damage down on your opponents so you know it does give you a little bit of a heads up as to what direction someone might be ap approaching from from short range and uh you know anything else that's around you that you might not be able to see um and then with radar depth obviously we're just trying to be completely hidden once we are back in cover we don't want any targeting information on us once we are hidden and we don't want anyone you know locking in on us with lrms you know if i if i disappear i want to be d done i want to be completely gone so instantly hidden is what the radar depth does for us as for the two weapon modules this was a tough choice i was thinking about you know either going range uh you know just to get a little bit extra um you know uh uh extended approach to to how i could play this mech just to get a little bit more of a cushion to work with with how far i can shoot my loadout uh to and I decided, you know what, with the 1.27 heat management, 
it's not the greatest, but it's not the worst either. And we do have some wiggle room there, especially when, with going with the SRM6s and the small pulses. So I wanted to go with uh, the cooldown module level 5 on there, which gives a 12% cooldown to those SRM6s and those small pulse lasers. Now, the reason why I didn't do it for the UAC-10 is because of the fact that, obviously, jamming comes into the situation. And even if you do cool down with the UAC-10s, Jamming is going to be an issue that we do have to deal with. Um, just because, you know, if you keep trying to double tap and you're jammed up anyway, what does the cooldown matter at that point? So, as for what I placed on it, I wanted to go with the SRM6 module cooldown and the small pulse laser cooldown. Um, and then, as for the consumables, the cool shot 9x9 and an improved UAV. Now, that comes in handy, especially once we are up close and personal with our opponents. You know, even if we do have Seismic Sensor, it does relay the rest of the information to the team who might not have Seismic Sensor, so they know exactly where our opponents are, especially if we're stacked up, and we're all trying to amplify or place down damage on our opponents. So that is a full, encompassing overview for you guys. I know it was a long intro there, but it definitely was something that I wanted to talk to you guys about ahead of time before we dive into the, uh, the rest of the gameplay here. So, you know, I do want to just, you know, point the, all this stuff out to you. If you want my honest opinion on whether this mech, uh, uh, you know, is viable or if you should go out and purchase it for yourselves, I'm going to give you my opinion at the end. So skip to the end if you want to see it, but I definitely suggest going through the gameplay first. So let's hop into the queue and see how we perform with the Supernova Boiler Hero. Here we go. Alrighty, guys, so we're going to hop right into the gameplay here so you don't have to watch two and a half minutes of walking going 62 kph to get to the battle so we're gonna hop right into the action here and as you can see we are on grim plexus so it is a longer range focused map now a majority of our team or a lot of our team i should say is already focused up right here in gulf seven so that's exactly what we're gonna do right now is just hang out with them provide some support see exactly where their team is forming up and even over seismic we can see a couple of opponents coming in through, uh, what is it, Fox 8, Golf 8. And so we're going to make sure that we constantly keep an eye on that mini-map. Just in case they try and make any sort of aggressive movement or try and get a flank on us. A lot of their team is over there. And I did pop my UAV so that my team is informed as to where they are. And this Marauder tried to get a shot on us, but he shot into the wall. Wall hacks confirmed. And we were able to put down some return fire. So I think we got the better deal between that trade. Now we're gonna help out our friend the Marauder 2C here. He's trying to back up, but you know what? We're gonna hang right in there with him and provide some face support for him. Putting down some damage on that uh, Marauder 2C and that Bushwhacker, but they do have the numbers. So I am going to retreat a little bit. This Marauder 2C came around the corner, but it looks like he's gonna get some a lot of damage coming in, not only from me, but a couple of my friends as well. Now we're going to bleed our target there on the Centurion. We did get a salvo into him, double tapping twice on those UAC-10s. So it's we awesome. did get some damage down from a, a little bit of a longer range approach there. But now, because of where my team is positioned, I'm going to take the power stance. And that's right up here on top of the platform. Put a salvo into that uh, Centurion right there. But look at where their team is forming up, right at the base of this platform here. So we do have to keep an eye on there. I'm like a frantic cat right now. I feel like I should be, you know, my eyes should be all over the place just in case someone comes around the side of this platform. We get some fire from uh, across the way here, but nothing that exposed them to our guns. So we have to make sure that we're just mindful of where they are moving. And this Bushwhacker came out and did expose enough for us to get a partial salvo out down on him. And he did retreat. But now this Marauder 2C is trying to get some exposure, gets completely cored out. He's down to two small pulse lasers, big shot into that center torso, and we take him down. This other Marauder 2C is trying to back up, and he's accompanied by a Bushwhacker. We're going to constantly put some damage down on this Marauder 2C, and my team is able to clean him up. So two big kills very quickly with those two Marauder 2Cs going down, and you know what? We're going to slice right through the middle. And was that a King Crab? It's a King Crab, and he's got his back exposed to us. Big shot to that backside, and he goes down as well. It's now 5-1, to one, so we do have a huge approach. And I'm going to cut him right between the middle. This Warhammer tried to get some shots down, and we completely take him out. He had no idea that we were there, completely blindsided. And I'm looking on the minimap, 
and I'm just seeing where my team is and where those two opponents were, and I'm going to leave those two guys for the rest of my team. I feel like we need some support on this side of the platform. I only have two friendlies over here, and I feel like more of their tonnage is on this side of the map at this point. There are seven of them down, so there's five of them left. Two I know were over there. I'm guessing three are over here, and the Centurion is going to take a big alpha to the center torso, and he goes down as well, so that is another huge kill for us. Eight to three at this point. Not sure what is remaining. I'm guessing, you know, either some heavies or some mediums, something like that. Yeah, right in front of us, we have this summoner leading him off with our ballistics. Just getting some fire down. He's trying to get some suppressive fire down with his LRMs. And he is retreating behind some of the terrain. So, now it's just time to swarm in and take him out. Lima here, he's just getting torn up at this point. And we do get some support from one of our lights. I am taking some fire from behind me. Lima is just... I have no idea how this guy is still alive. We are just blowing everything off this guy. And he is still standing, putting one final salvo into him. And my team is able to wrap it up. But I'm cored out from behind. Oh, no, there's a locust behind me. He's going to get me. And there I go. Oh, my gosh. He got right behind me. And that is what the danger is, especially once you do commit to a kill. It's Like I said, surprise brawler mode is exactly how we played this match. And although we did die, right now it is 10 to 7. There's a locust left. And I'm not sure what the other mech is, but we did set our team up to get this final kill and clean up the rest of this round. So yeah, now it is 11 to 7. Final kill coming with the, against this Locust. That left torso is very weak from what I remembered. And there he goes. So we did get the kill, and that is able to get us the victory and clean up the round. But we played it exactly how we should have, especially with this mech. Like I said, it does have its place in Mech Warrior, but you do have to be selective in how you use it and in what capacity you use it. But as for the stats for the round, Four kills, four assists, 832 damage with seven components destroyed. Played exactly how we wanted to play it. And like I said, it's a surprise brawler. You know, all of a sudden they come out of nowhere, they don't even have time to get targeting information on you, and bam, you hit them with a ton of DPS, dip in, dip out, and avoid a lot of face time. So it's a lot of DPS in a short amount of time. Keep that in mind. We're gonna head into one final round of gameplay. So let's enter back into the queue. Here we go. Alrighty guys, here we go. Third and final round is on my favorite map, HPG Manifold. Now this is gonna provide an excellent test as to whether or not this mech can actually brawl. You know, closer range combat. We are playing domination, so there is going to be a lot of focus around the manifold itself. So we're maybe even going to go for a power play position and actually take our stance up on the manifold right now. Whether we go top level or bottom level, we're going to make the best of it. So first things first, we're going to peek out of our entrance across the way to see if we can spot any enemy mechs coming outside of their entrance towards us or if they're moving away from us. So right out of this entrance, we're just going to peer across. And yeah, there is someone moving there. But all we have to support this kind of range are our UAC 10s. And I'm not going to use some ammo trying to get some long range fire down, especially with that minimal window of exposure. So I'm just going to make my way towards the manifold, towards the beacon. And pretty much decide here, I think I'm actually going to make my way underneath the manifold and pretty much take that power stance I was mentioning to you guys. Again, consistency is key. So we are again going to engage surprise brawler mode and head our way underneath here. Just do a quick little scan before we actually make our way in and obviously keep peering around the corners just in case they do have any lights or mediums that might be checking out the space immediately. And where we're gonna head is pretty much into the center but we're going to go around the right side here. So we're going to go around this reactor, focus up in Echo 6, maybe Echo 5, and pretty much take the corner directly across from us. And we do have a light mech down here, and he is engaging with one of our guys over on the other side. So we do have some support under here right now, and that's what I want to be careful of, is making sure that they don't actually make a push underneath. And if they do, at least we'll play our part and relay that information back to the rest of the team so that they have the heads up. Just checking out Seismic here. They have a lot of mechs in a very, very short distance between each other. 
They are firing in, and I'm gonna peer around the side here and just see if anything does hop down. Yes, this is Locust, and I did leg him, so one more shot actually should do it, and he goes down immediately. So that was a huge kill for us very early on in this round, especially on a Locust. Those are the hardest mechs for me to hit. And in an assault, you know there's a little bit of a delay with how you can actually get your, your target and then focus in on them and get the damage down. So huge kill for us early on there. Now we're just going to peek around, obviously pay attention to that seismic. Looking at the shadows, we see a Kodiak, it looks like, up top, and this Stalker, he's putting down some large laser fire down on us, but I do not think you want to engage back. Brawl mode with me, buddy. Yeah, he's going to back up very quickly, expose left torso, and make his way back to the team. Now, I am looking on the minimap, and I do realize that I Good am job, myself man. a little overextended. My team did make their way out from the basement, and it looks like they are trying to get a flank around into, yeah, Fox, from Fox 6 oh, into yeah, Echo yeah, 6, Juliet. and then into Delta 6 towards Delta 5. So you know what? I'm going to give them some help. As you saw, I was backing my way out towards the entrance of where my team is just in case something did come down in the basement. I could get some damage down on them while making my way towards the rest of my team. So we're going to head up on top of this ramp here. Yeah, they're, they're putting down some fire, and now we do have some friends for support. So popping up on top of here, we have this Atlas that's very much exposed, and we're only going to put down some UAC fire down on him. We are out of range for our SRMs and our small pulse lasers, so the UAC fire is going to do for now. The Stalker is coming back into play, getting a couple double taps down. And again, that Stalker is just trying to make his way back to the rest of his team. This Timberwolf goes out in the open by himself. So you know what? I'm actually going to take a little bit of an aggressive play here. Put some extra damage down on him because he's completely exposed up here on top of the Manifold. And my team is providing some suppressive fire, some amplification damage. One more shot and he goes down. Thank you, team, for helping me out getting him down. Now on the other side of this ramp here, I know we have a couple of opponents. Just checking the score real quick, and it's pretty even. This Kodiak's right in front of us. Big Alpha to that center torso, and he goes down. Going to focus up on this Stalker here. We took off his left torso, so he's only left with three of his six large lasers. We did overheat, but my team is just constantly putting damage on him. He is neutered at this point. Going for that kill shot, and unfortunately we overheat. But my team is able to wrap it up. Now we have the Zeus that's focusing in on us. My team is going to help me out and get the kill on him. This Marauder 2C is up on top of the platform. We're just trying to get him off there so he doesn't have an angle on the rest of our friendlies. And we're going to take a little bit of a more aggressive position yet again. We want to have some cover, but we also want to get some damage down. So I'm going to take a position right underneath the bridge here. Now we have a couple mechs right in front of us. They have they have an assault. They have, they have two assaults. They have a, a Marauder 2C in this atlas we're putting some fire down on this atlas and the atlas is going to turn around and try and get some fire back down on us he's almost neutered all he has left is a large pulse laser and a medium pulse laser bad overheat there they get a lot of damage down on me i'm just going to torso twist and hopefully get my way out of here that hunchback popped up on top of the wall and we were able to get a partial salvo down on him but thank god i'm constantly turning my torsos just trying to get back to the team and look at me now you put yourself in a very, very horrible position with every torso pretty much cored. So I, I can only imagine one more salvo from the enemy team, and I am going to pop. But hopefully my team is able to wrap this one up. Now, we did get some targeting information on this Marauder 2C in front of us. All we have to do is take out that right leg, and he will go down. But he is using that ramp for cover, and unfortunately, we went for the right leg. We got a partial alpha down on pretty much his entire side, but that didn't get us the kill. And now he is using that ramp to his advantage to stay alive. Very, very smart move on his part. So we're going to keep our eye on him. He's right underneath us. Probably not going to move too much from there, because then he knows he's exposed. And at least two of us are up here. I have a supernova with me and me. You know, that's that's the two of us that are trying to put down some damage. Did see some inner sphere laser fire. So I'm guessing that I think it was a hunchback, if I, if I do recall correctly. And this Black Knight, he looks like he's probably going to get some exposure on us right here. We're going to put a salvo down. And he dropped down, so we missed with the salvo. But he is going to turn around the corner. So that gives us a big opportunity to put down a lot of damage into that center torso. He's not paying attention to us. He's paying attention to our teammate. So again, one more salvo, and there he goes. So finally, he goes down. I believe it's three on two. I'm not going to look at the score right now just because it's getting 
getting pretty intense here. I know that the Marauder 2C is under us. I'm worried about that Hunchback, especially the health of the Hunchback. He came around the corner and he took me out. Oh my gosh. Very, very smart play on his part. Two kills, four assists, 1,240 damage. And that Hunchback is extremely, extremely fresh. And I don't think we're going to be able to take this one back. It looks like it's going to be the end of the round. Yeah, this Hunchback, it's the 4SP. It's got that structure quirk and everything. Very short range, and he's just making mincemeat of our Highlander 2C, and he does take him out. So, unfortunately, we did lose the battle. But you know what? That's only one side of the story. The gameplay does speak for itself, ladies and gentlemen. The Supernova can actually perform as a brawler and we showed it out there on the battlefield it does serve as a surprise brawler so you're not getting a lot of face time Damn. but the results do speak for themselves two kills four assists 1240 damage with eight components destroyed but just as a final thought here for you guys i would hold off on purchasing the supernova if you haven't purchased it yet there are other better options out there especially when you look at the dire wolf or the Kodiak or the Marauder 2C. They just perform a little bit better right now, especially ton for ton, and the options that you can either include, exclude, mix and match with. So overall, I would just hold off for right now until at least the new skill tree comes out and see how that kind of shakes things up a little bit. But that's going to do it for this episode of MechWarrior Online. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, check out the links in the description. I will have the Smurfy link there in case you guys want to build this mech out for yourselves. I also have a link to my Patreon and PayPal pages in case you want to help out a little bit financially to keep this channel running. Thank you all so much for all the support. I really do appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you all on the next one. Take care, guys.